Thanks for tuning in. Pastor John here. We're in the series, The Battles Begin. Jesus making his way to the cross to battle for us, especially there, uh, to defeat Satan once and for all by that his life, death, and resurrection for us. But along the way, he has battles. And today we're going to look at the battle of religion, where he faces the religious leaders at the temple. So if you have your Bible, look up Ezekiel chapter 36, 22 to 28, 1 Corinthians 18, uh, verses 26 to 11, and John chapter 2, verses 13 to 22. It's quite a battle. It's one we battle every day as well. So get ready for a powerful message. The battles begin. And when I think of battles, I told him earlier, I, I, thought, I think of, I don't watch Hallmark movies. So I, when I think of battles, the movies I watch are like battle movies, right? And, but then when I think about battles, I think about being prepared for a battle. You know, when I get prepared for battle, when I was uh, playing sports at one time, there was a lot of training that took place before the battle actually began, right? And so the battles that we face, we knowing we're in a battle, there are some things that God has given us, an armor that he has put on us. So if we're in a battle and if I'm an enemy and I'm against you, and if you don't have on the right equipment, I know how to attack you. So if you don't have the bre breastplate of truth, guess what I'm going to attack you with? Lies. If you don't have your head covered, I'm going to attack your mind. Your feet's not covered. It's the gospel. I'll water it down for you. We got to be prepared for battle. And the battles we face. And I, was, I, I said, God, I said, battles sound really, really, really rough, you know, for Christians, you know. We're supposed to, once you're saved, you know, everything is good, you know. That's the big story that I was told all my life coming up, that once you're saved, all your problems go away and life is great. But there's a battle that we are engaged in, and it's a spiritual battle. And this spiritual battle, guess what? We don't fight with it the way the world fight. See, we, the weapons that we fight with, are not of this world, all right? So we are fighting a spiritual battle. And in this spiritual battle, God has given us everything we need. As a matter of fact, the good news is God has given us every resource to engage in spiritual warfare. Everything we need, he's given us to engage in spiritual warfare. He wants us to have the hope because he knows that we have, he have already won the ultimate battle. The ultimate battle has already been won through Jesus Christ and Calvary. Him raising from the dead with all power in his hand. The battle has been won. But he has given us his Holy Spirit to fight this battle. We can't do it ourselves. As a matter of fact, this fleshly body can't do it. We try to fight it with the flesh, but we cannot fight this world with the flesh, the devil with the flesh. See, we're in a battle with this world. We, we are in a fallen world where the enemy is in control of this world. He is the prince of the air. That's how you attack our minds through TV and through different things we hear people saying through television. That's how the enemy gets into our gates. So we're in this spiritual battle, but he has literally given us his Holy Spirit to fight this battle. So today, we're going to be talking about, well, we, we've been talking about, uh, we have battled the spirit of identity. We've battled the spirit of identity to find out who we are in Christ, right? And then we battled the spirit of, uh, battled the, the battled uh, of our purpose, our purpose, our identity, and our purpose in life. So today we're going to be talking about the battle of religion. And I love this topic because when I, we first came to First Lutheran, this is the sermon that was being preached when we came into these doors. 
As a matter of fact, when we first came in, we sat right back in that corner right back there. We came through the doors, and we had decided we was going to visit a couple churches, and First Lutheran was the second one we was going to visit. The first one was an 8.30 service we missed, but we made it to the 11 o'clock service. We walked through the doors. Pat Bennett was in the back, walked in. The first thing she said, can we have your blood? Lutheran Church, can you have my blood? I'm like, what are we getting into? (laughs) But they was doing a blood drive. But that day, me and my wife sat back there, and as the word was coming forth, it was speaking to our spirit that everything that we was going through, the reason why we was here is because we was dealing with a religious spirit. And everything that we heard, man, it was just feeding us, feeding us. When we got up, we was in tears. We got up. We walked out those doors, didn't say a word. We drove all the way home. For those who don't know, that's only like four blocks. (laughs) But when we got there, we was just in awe of everything. God was just speaking to us that this religion, man, the man has it so can get in there and we will be worshiping man versus God. And I'm not saying that because I'm not trying to discredit anybody of, as far as where our, the church we came from. Because, you know, when you don't know no better, that's just what you do. But when your eyes is open and God has shown you this is not the way, you have a choice to make. Either you're going to turn to him or you're going to go with the flow of what everything is going on because it's a tradition or it's a religion. But no, we have to let that go. See, the thing about that we need to know that's very important as Christians is this. We need to know as Christians The identity, the difference between religion and relationship. You see, the distinction will let us know if we have a genuine relationship with God or are we only engaging in religious rituals or traditions that do not draw us closer to God, whether in the church or outside the church. See, religion is something that you have to work You have to do all this work to try to work and do these works and works and works. In this relationship with Christ, Christ said the work has already been done. It's already been done. Only thing you have to do is worship me. There is no works to do. And sometimes people get that so, it's so hard to take, so hard to comprehend because in our fleshly mind, when somebody give us something that don't cost us anything, the first thing come to our mind, it got to be something to it. My thing is, this is too good to be true. You mean to tell me there is nothing I have to do? There is no traditions I have to go by? There is no rituals I have to perform? I don't have to turn flips? I don't have to do anything? He says the work has already been done. And people can't comprehend that. It's done. That's why the battle of religion, we need to get it out of the way. It's the relationship with Jesus Christ. He is always drawing us to him. He wants us to fall in love with him. You see, when we get caught up into, sometimes we can get caught up into, like we say, uh, rituals and, and, and traditions and doing things and We don't have the love for the Father. We care more about the traditions and the rituals than we do our Creator, the one that loves us. It's kind of like being in a marriage. Now, I can do things for Jackie out of religion, and I can do it traditionally for 27 years. But if I don't have any love there, All that I do for for 27 years doesn't mean anything to her. 
if she don't feel the love. The love that we have for the Father and the love that He, the love that he has for us is everything. The, the religion, it, it, we look at the Old Testament we was reading in, in Leviticus. God's people, we are something else, y'all. Ever since the beginning of time, we have been just messing up and messing up. But he keep loving and loving and loving and loving. In Leviticus, he told the children of Israel, he says, For I am the Lord who brought you out of Egypt to be your God. Thus, for I am holy, therefore you are holy. In other words, you are set apart. We as Christians are set apart. He brought them out of bondage and set them free because he is holy and they are holy. And we see in our lesson today in Ezekiel, we see where they, children of God, we've done the same thing. We went back to worshiping idols, defiling this temple. And here come our loving Lord and Savior. He comes and bring us out again because that's the love he has for us. But he has the love for this entire world. It's so much bigger than us. His name means a lot, and we are ambassadors. When he brought them out when, in Ezekiel, he says, I'm doing this for my namesake. For my namesake, I'm doing this. You see, when we are representing Jesus Christ and we're worshiping traditions and rituals and all these different things and we're supposed to be worshiping him, people are watching us if we say we are Christians. And they say, you know what? You talk more about your denomination than you do your church, about your Jesus. You, you, you care more about what's going on in the clique that you in, then your Bible study that you got going on. You know, to get away, to get in tune with the Spirit and see what God is doing. We got to get out of tradition and religion and into relationship with God. And that's where we're going to find ourselves in our gospel lesson today. That God is concerned about us having a relationship with him. And he's concerned about anything getting in the way of that. It's a free, it's free. He paid the price for it. I say it's free, but he, he went through a lot for it. And he's wooing us to him. And so in our gospel lesson today, we're going to see where where. His people in the gospel lesson, the Pharisees, they are being caught up in the same way in this religion, act, and tradition. The religion, act, and tradition. And in our gospel lesson today, it's taking place in Jerusalem. And so in today's time, just to pretend today is April the 8th, 2024. April the 8th, 2024, a solar eclipse, Right? Everybody is coming to Hot Springs, right, or to wherever to see the solar eclipse. This is what was going on in Jerusalem at the time. Everybody was coming to the temple because of the Passover. They was coming to, to the temple to worship God, to remember what he had done for them and their forefathers, how he had delivered them up out of Egypt, how he had protected them, how he had made a way for them, how he provided food for them, Shelter for all this wonderful stuff that his father had did for them. Jesus was approaching the scene to see how they was worshiping. To, to come into worship with them. To worship his father. And when he shows up in Jerusalem, guess what's going on? Everything but worship. You see, when he showed up in Jerusalem, and I always thought when I'm reading this text, I always thought it was a church, a temple, like a building probably the size of uh, First Lutheran where people come and worship like we worship it today. But the temple was huge. Hundreds of thousands of people was coming to this temple. 
And on the outer courts of this temple, people was out there selling animals, unblemished animals. Uh, people would come with animals, and they would exchange them to get good animals to go inside to make the sacrifice with. And then you had money changers out there because they could not take in the money of the world. They had to take the money in that, that was the good money that they could spend on the inside of the temple. So, and then you had your tax collectors out there that if you was a certain age, they was taxing you to come in. And since they was all crooked, guess what they would do? They would raise the taxes. And this was going on at the temple, at the church. All this stuff was going on. And you know if all that's going on, there's some more stuff going on. Because if you got all these people coming from all around, hundreds of thousands of people, if you have any type of business, you know that's a good place to set up shop. You can go there and sell out anything because everybody is coming there. Matter of fact, people are leaving their businesses, coming to the temple to set up in front of the temple to make a profit. It's kind of like when the eclipse, the eclipse come. People are going to be coming from all around. People are going to be selling T-shirts, people glasses. Some people are going to be ridden out their house so people can stay. Not knowing what type of evil spirits they're going to leave up in there. This was going on at the temple. Now, we talk about Jesus getting angry. Do you see why he was angry? A righteous anger. This is what they done to, to my father? This is how you, you treat him? The one who has saved you? As a matter of fact, I'm getting ready to go to the cross for you. And this is how you, you're treating the whole situation? You know, if it was our day and time, you know, I, I told him in uh, 830 service, I'm sure people was flying in on their private jets, coming in. People was coming in in their limos. You had... Um, uh, people hanging out there selling stuff. You had, I told her, I said, I know, I know there was a bootlegger somewhere on, in that courtyard selling some alcohol. <laughs> the women's of the night was there. All this was going on. It was all the way live. In the house of the Lord, outside the gate. A pastor said something to me that really, really stuck to me. What about those ones who was coming to the temple to worship the Lord because they had a relationship with him and they wanted him? They couldn't get in the temple because they didn't fit up to the standards that it took to get into the temple. My God. That was in biblical days. But you know that happens today in our time? The people feel sometimes that I don't reach the right status to belong to this church, not this church, but to a, this a church. When God says, I come that all might be saved. That's what I love about First Luther, man. This place is a healing church. When we came in here in 2014, we came in battered and bruised over religion. And this is where we got healed and made whole. Right here in this place. So, and then we see another thing in, in the text where what happens here is they are here selling all this stuff, right? And those that's coming, it's convenient for them. It's convenient worship. You know, in 2024, people look for convenient worship. This is what was going on, convenient worship. Check it out. They, co they come to Jerusalem. They have their money. They exchange their money. They buy the animal they need. They take it to the, to, the, uh, <clears throat> to the priest. Boom. No worries. All done. Go back home. It's over with. Simple process. Today's time, and make it 2024. You come to church. Say hi to everybody. Speak. Have a good time. Listen to the word. Give an offering if you like. If not. Gone. It's a good day. We start out Monday morning. We'll start back next Sunday. This is what they was doing. Tradition. Come in the church every Sunday out of tradition. 
You know, in the eclipse, people are going to be rushing to get to hot springs to see what the creator have created, right? Wouldn't it be something if they'd be rushing to the house of the Lord? If they'd be coming from all over the world, rushing to the first Lutheran or any house of the Lord that's preaching Jesus Christ. To lay all their burdens down, to cry out and to confess Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. See, that will happen. Revival, will, revival like that will break out. And only how revival will break out is when religion get out the way. Reli- revival can't break out with religion in a way. It can't, it can't happen because you got traditions and you got all this stuff to go by. But if you want revival, that's the spirit is going to fall. And whatever happens, happens. Sister asked me, um, is it okay if I, if I get happy, can I shout in church? You can do whatever you like up in First Lutheran. You know, I, I, I was in a church service. I was in a church service over in Little Rock. And this lady, I was raising my hands out the church. She said, oh, I just wish I could do that. You look like you were so free. And I was like, um, who's telling you you can't do that? You know, what spirit is holding your hands down bondage to where you cannot raise your hands? All right, I'm back. Come on. And so not only was it convenient, watch this. It was convenient, but then the Pharisees, they didn't even try to defend themselves for selling the animals and making, exchanging money. When Jesus showed up, they didn't even try to defend themselves. I mean, if Jesus would have showed up and I was doing wrong, I was like, Jesus, you know, it ain't what it looked like. (laughs) that's the least I can say, but it is what it is. But they didn't even, they didn't even, they didn't even defend themselves. Instead, they asked him a question to show us a sign. Isn't that something? They asked Jesus to show them a sign. All the signs and wonders he's performed, now they're ready for a sign again. See, he was in their pockets. And when you start talking, messing with people's finances, it becomes a problem. When people get to attacking finances, it raises a problem. So they, they, so they ask him a, a question. They ask him this question. He says, I will tear this temple down, and in three days I'll rebuild it. Now, if they, when they heard that, I'm sure they thought, okay, he done lost his mind. It took us 46 years to do this. There's no way he can do this. But the disciples was listening. And, you know, we've been studying the disciples. And the disciples, these are the ones that's going to spread this gospel when Jesus leave off the scene. So even in the midst of all this chaos, he was using this time as a teachable moment for his disciples. Because the scripture says that when he raised from the dead, his disciples remembered what he said. And remembering what he said, they was able to go out and witness and say, he said he would tear down the temple and in three days he would raise it again. And he was talking about his body. So, dealing with religion, the battle of religion, James 1.27 said, this is religion, Tim, is to take care of widows and orphans and don't be polluted by the world. That's it. Take, take care of widows and orphans and don't be polluted by the world. That's the religion that Christ would accept. 
That's pure religion. So as I practice what God has ex- accepts as pure religion, there's three things I can do. First, as I practice what God accepts as pure religion, I can make sure I am filled with his Holy Spirit. Make sure that I am filled with this Holy Spirit. We cannot fight any battle without his Holy Spirit. If we try to fight a battle without the Holy Spirit, we would get beat down, beat up from the flow up to the neck up to toe up. However you want to put it, I messed it all up. (laughs) But we have to have the Holy Spirit. We have to have the Holy Spirit. And he told me, he said, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. He told his disciples, you remain here and you receive power before you go out. Secondly, as I practice what God accepts as pure religion, I can make sure that I am a student of his word, a student of his word. 2 Timothy 2.15 tells us to, in the King James Version, it says, to study, to show thyself approved. A workman need not be ashamed to rightly divide the word of truth. To be students of the word. To know what the word of God says. Thirdly, as I practice what God accepts as pure religion, I can make sure I am dedicated to prayer that I have a communication with God. It's not just me crying out to God, oh, God help me, I need this, I need that. A communication that we are in communion all day long. I meditate on him all day. It's like everything I do is he's center of it. I'm, he may, he's, he's my everything. So in my conversation, that's who I'm talking to. I talk to the Lord. So we need to be... We we need to be filled with his spirit, his word, and prayer. These are weapons that's going to help us, tools that's going to help us to draw closer to him. That's what it's all about, is drawing closer to Jesus Christ. And once we draw closer to him, it becomes, life comes more easier. That James, when it says, don't be polluted by the world, there's so much out in the world that keep, tries to keep us away from Christ. You know, a person can, on a Sunday morning, a person can figure out a hundred things to do besides coming to church. And watch this, and make a good excuse to them why they shouldn't come. The reason why I know this, because I did it. But when you fall in love with Jesus, it's nothing like being in his presence. You can't wait to get to the house of the Lord. You love being around other Christians. You love sharing the gospel to people. It's just like fire shut up in your bone. That you can't help but to spread the word of God everywhere you go. We're talking about the battle of religion. See, when we're in a relationship, we get outside of these walls. Religion try to keep us inside of these walls. But we as First Lutheran, we go outside of the walls. Amen. If you leave out this building right now, at the end of the, 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 the street, it's going to say, you are now entering the mission field. And that's what we're about. Because we don't want to bring a bad name to God's name. When people see us out in the community, on our jobs, they can say, that's a follower of Jesus Christ. I don't want nobody saying, oh, that's a member of First Lutheran. I want them to say, that's a follower of Jesus Christ. Because that's the one who saves. As a matter of fact, as I close, I went out to lunch before this message. I went out to lunch, had lunch with these people. I had some Catholic friends, Methodist friends, 
Well, <laughs> Methodist friends, uh, some Lutheran friends, Baptist friends, we was all together, right? And we sitting there talking about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So my friend Kim, before she tell me, tell me the scripture, she says, so which one of us is going to be in heaven? <laughs> is it going to be the Catholics? Is it going to be the Lutherans or the Baptists? Which one's going to be there? Those that are redeemed by Jesus Christ. Those are the ones that's going to be there. So, I was, as I take my seat, I was, I was uh, I told Valerie and them, Valerie and Jerry, about our religion, James 127. And I had no idea. These shirts been made out a long time ago, before this message even came about. James 127. Pure religion. And we give this to our youth. It said, do good and be good in Christ alone. But it's all about Jesus. It's not about no religion. It's about not being polluted with this world, taking care of widows and orphans, and having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. A personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. It's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And Valerie and Jerry, these are yours. I'm, I'm inviting them up right now. So it'll be easy. You can stay here and help give it to them. But as they're coming up, um, I want to make it even easier. Come on. The difference between religion and relationship is the Holy Spirit. Yep. There is no life over here fullness of life over here and I know for some people it's like there's there's blockages in the flow of the spirit it's all of a sudden like the spirit can't flow I, I don't feel alive I, I, I find I feel stuck in my place there's, there's things that are in the way here's the deal all you gotta do is ask we got prayer warriors here to at, help you to ask I feel stuck I feel empty I I struggle so much. I feel alone. I feel hurt. I feel angry. The answer is the Holy Spirit. Jesus already did it all, but the Spirit is the one that brings everything that Jesus won and did to the inside so that springs of living water flow out. This whole life of Jesus flows and moves. It's a move that keeps happening through the flow of the Spirit inside. It's not something I can put on a shelf no more. It's something I'm living, caring, talking about, living out in everything that I do. So if you're feeling stuck, get you some prayer. I pray that this message blessed you in a rich way that you now understand really what's going on, what's going on in the churches, what's going on in our lives when we are stuck to really being close to God. What's in the way? It's often religion. It's The issue is the Holy Spirit. It's draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. If we can be a blessing to you on this journey, give us a call. Our number is 501-525-0322. Love to pray. Love to talk. You can also follow us live on Facebook. Our Facebook page is First Lutheran Church Hot Springs AR. We come on on Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m. and 11 o'clock a.m. Central Time. So like our page, you can watch them anytime. So thanks for tuning in, and God bless you on your journey, and we'll see you next time.